Victor Infante, thank you for coming to the Pike Studio. Thanks for having uh, me, Mike. Big week for Worcester Magazine because this is the uh, favorite New England artists' uh, albums that you compile. And how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it in one form or another for almost a decade. Um, we started at the Act section in Telegram and Gazette, and I would be doing little capsules. I think I did 10 in the first, first few years. And I'd use file photos, and it was okay. People liked it. It was nice. And then when I took moved into Worcester Magazine, because complicated, but the Telegram and Gazette manages um, Worcester Magazine and right. the editor, what we decided to do was, well, if we're going to do this, let's blow it up and make it big. So I expanded to 20 artists, um, or acts as it were, and invited all of them to come to Ralph's Rock Diner that year for mm -hmm. a giant photo shoot. And it was received beyond our expectations. And every year since has been beyond our expectations. It seems to be a thing that people look forward to. I think it seems to be a thing that for a lot of artists, they like being in the photos. So that makes them excited about the mm -hmm. project. It's, it's a look at these artists that you won't see anywhere else. And plus, it's you know, it's a chance for me to just show off my taste, which is <laughs> right. eclectic and so you, weird. <laughs> so, as the editor, you, this is your; these are your choices. These are my right choices, here. right? Okay. So, and I, I think it's great because you know you're you're featuring the sound of New England, and it's not just rock, and it's not just folk, but you've got hip hop in there, mm -hmm. and country, and uh, I don't know how you'd categorize uh, Walter Crockett or I would Carlos say Walter Adria. Is pretty much old school folk. Carlos Adria is um, like, Spanish guitar, Latin guitar, yeah, Latin jazz. kind of guitar. This particular album is acoustic, but yeah. it's beautiful. So it's everything. Exactly, We're and there's a number proud. of Worcester artists in here. It's not yeah. exclusively Worcester artists. There's a lot of Boston yeah. and some other places in there, but it's Worcester centric. Yeah, there's, there's a few <laughs> and good ones too. Oh, very much. So let's talk about your top five. New England albums of 2022. All right. And I'm going to make a caveat here. Oh, okay. All right. Because I would change my mind if you asked me in five hours. <laughs> I'm the same. You know what? I'm the same way. It's like, oh, yeah, that's my new favorite song this week. Well, I will just note really quick, like Carlos Adria and Walter Crockett, the first time I listened to those albums brought me to tears. They there are beautiful. Are, there are moments in there that are just gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Um, they are worth hearing all on their own. If I had to pick a top five right this moment, I mm -hmm. think um, Michael Caine and the Morning Afters would oh, probably yeah. be high on that list. My favorite on this list. Good old-fashioned punk rock um, at its purest. Um, you know, good attitude, straight-up rock. I, I find that uh, Michael Caine and the Morning Afters is if you took Bruce Springsteen and instead of the E Street Band, you had the Clash backing him. Exactly. You know? I, it's I, well, it's raw I, and it's gritty. Mm -hmm. you know? And its voice is the same way. Yeah, the comparison I always make is Social Distortion, which I think mm. is the biggest equivalent. Mm -hmm. I don't like comparing artists to other artists, but they're kind of coming from the same place, both right. philosophic, music philosophically and style wise and subject matter. So, you know, it's, it's good working class rock. It's, yeah. just, it's just pure. And a song like Carol Kay, which. Oh my God! He's just going back into the um, depths of music history and pulling out this—you know her sound of her bass playing, but you don't know her. Right. And right. He ma he builds a whole song around that concept. It's a straight. It's not about her, but it is about her. It's yeah. Amazing. And she's played on so many. She was part of the Wrecking Crew, right? Yeah. So that was this this group of studio musicians in L.A. that played on um, almost all the hits you hear from like the 50s, 60s, 70s, probably even beyond. Indeed. That, that you hear on the radio, a lot of the Beach Boys stuff and stuff like that. That's the thing about I love about Michael Caine in, in the morning after is great storytelling. Great storytelling. Yeah. Everybody going to the other end of the spectrum a little bit i'd have to it's only been out for a couple weeks i got it in right under the wire but um rock boyega by still gold which 
Oh, man, that's the hardest-hitting hip-hop album I've heard all year, and I'm talking anywhere. <laughs> it is good. And I'm it not like so uh, fantastic. I'm not a hip-hop aficionado by any means. I, I, I love it. I'm more of an old-school guy, you know, growing mm -hmm. up in the 80s. But these guys have something. They've got, they've got a particular sound, and it's not just hip-hop. It really is a mix of a lot of different things that I hear in them that they don't shove into your face. It's kind of subtly incorporated in there, and, and I think it's in the production Really, the way they choose to deliver their message. The is production, fantastic. really, um, they're produced by um, Janos the Archetype, who wins um, the Boston Music Award every year for yeah. best producer. Um, he is the he is that this is he is the center of this project with rapper Mo Pope and the rest of them, and it's they just takes all five of these artists' hip hop styles and just blends them into something new and just takes all of the blocks off of it. It really is something new. It really is. They don't sound like any other hip hop artist out there. They really don't. Yeah. And I think they are probably the most, I hate to say it, but they're probably the most important act in New England hip hop right now. Giuliano Durazio's, or mm -hmm. now under the name Giuliano, his self-titled album there. I said in the out in the review, it is a straightforward rock and roll album. Yes. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of maybe Cheap Trick at yeah. times. There are times, you know, yeah. It, but because it, it's got some great hooks in it. And so got it's got not, good, he's got a beautiful ballad in there. Right. Yeah. He's, he kind of covers it all. I actually saw him once at a friend's son's graduation party wow he knew he somebody <laughs> knew him and had him come by and sing some he was solo acoustic mm. and all i remember from that is this guy's got an amazing voice mm. he is it's absolutely stellar and you know he's he's associated with a lot of the other acts that are blowing up in worcester so cara brindisi being probably the top mm. of the list at the moment this album is the only things that make this album stand out because it is so much of a straightforward rock and roll album is the fact that it's from a queer perspective, which you don't often get in yeah. rock and roll anymore, right? Or at all? Oh, barely, barely. Yeah. Um, it's better now, especially in the alt rock. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, um, scene, but you know, way back if you want to go way back, uh, I believe it was the Tom Robinson band mm -hmm. in the seventies, and he was one of the first kind of openly gay rock guys. Yeah, if had you a could, rock band. Yeah, and then went, Rob Halford from Judas Priest, of course. And, and if you, know. you go back into the the like the early punk scenes in New York and Los Angeles, mm -hmm. they were very female centric and very gay centric. Yeah, and Juliana's perspective alone isn't enough to make this such a fabulous album. It's the fact that it is so flawlessly executed. Yes, um, the song "Don't Pray on Me" is the one I would recommend to listeners which is just riveting it's just a riveting personal statement of people using prayer to push him out of a family using prayer to mm -hmm. not do anything about guns mm -hmm. it's, it's that's not enough right you've got to love people right. you've got to have Let's go for um, Senseless Optimism. Um, this is a very odd one, yes, but I love her. But that's why I, I love her too, because it doesn't sound like anything else that's out there. That's what I love. When I discover some new music, I'm just like, what's this? I have no, there's no reference. I have no idea how to describe it. And she's amazing. She is. She's absolutely incredible. She's got this 
gorgeous voice, and it's very much her styling is very low key jazz stylings, mm-hmm. and it's applied to kind of nouveau folk sort of things. But it's just so beautiful, and you just sink into every yeah. every line, and it's it's stellar. It's just it's a short album. I usually don't even put EPs on it, but it was so good I had to include it. Would you describe her vocals? as uh smoldering is smoldering that a good, is a good word smoldering yeah. is a good i don't word. want to like pigeonhole it but she's no. got kind of a low it's almost very breathy. slow burn heat yeah with it. but the intensity is there yeah always yeah. always yeah. i think on most of these albums and i could be wrong she's playing most everything also oh, she she plays all the instruments You know what? I'm going to go for something interesting here. Let's go for um, the, the Chelsea Curve. I love them. Yeah. They are, they're just fun. They're one of, you know, it's like, they're a lot of fun. They're, yeah. You know, back in the day, punk rock was uh, fun. <laughs> well, it you cannot, know, yeah, it there not it, be. It came sometimes. out of angst and stuff, but, yeah. but they had a good time expressing their angst. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, you know the, the great Worcester poet Tony Brown um, has a line some, about punk rock, which is, someone let joy out on a rampage. <laughs> And that's a good. One. Yeah, <laughs> that's right? a great line. Yeah. One of my favorites, and they have that. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> you know, they have that sense of no swear word given, and they have that sense of just seizing joy in the moment of the song. Yes, which and just straight up, flat out punk. Um, Linda Party's an amazing vocalist. Mm. And it's just, I was in love with the album from the first play. And I listen to about 60, 75 albums a year. Jeez. And I write maybe about 40 of them. And um, yeah, that stood out. That, that, that follows me. Top it up, especially, I believe the song was called. Just like, say right. it's with me. If you, are in, uh, if you are in a bad mood, that's a great album. It really is. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Thanks Thank you so me. much. Yeah, and it's a great issue. It's out there right now, Worcester Magazine, and you can also get it online. Yes, right? everything is online. In fact, this is our lead story on WorcesterMag.com at the moment. It'll be on the front homepage for probably the better part of the week, And right. but you can search it. But no if you what. can't grab an issue wherever yep. they're available, you can always get it they online. They are free all over town. I know, free. That's free. If it's free, it's for me. That's for sure. Indeed. Well, uh, Victor Infante, yeah, editor of Worcester Magazine, uh, musicologist, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks and, for having and me. And thanks for giving exposure to all these bands that may not otherwise get this exposure and, and turning me on to some great music here.